Hi, I'm Emily. Wait, are you really doing this without me? I'm Anetta. <laughs> we just want to welcome you to Integrity Church Online. Hope you enjoy the service. Bye. Hey, welcome to Integrity Church. We're so glad you tuned in. We are coming to the end of a series that we've been spending the last number of weeks on and going through the book of James. We pray this morning's teaching from all of our pastors is a great encouragement to you. Uh, but before we go there, we're gonna engage in a time of worship together. So let's get our worship on. Let's get excited as we enter into the presence of the Lord. Let's worship God together.
Your power has no end The things you've done before In greater measure You will do again Cause there's no prison Wall you can't break through No mountain you can't move All things are possible there's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save, all things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up, you can light it up. Oh God, a revival, and let hope arise.
are possible And there's no broken body you can raise No soul that you can't save All things are possible All things are possible I don't know if you ever really considered uh, giving to be a part of your worship, but when we worship God, we bring him our best and we honor him and glorify him. And so we bring our offerings this morning. And I want to thank you so much for your faithful giving. And I know some people had some difficult times financially during this time, but God has been faithful. So thank you for continuing to support the ministry and the church and we can go on and do what God has called us to do. So let's pray and Ask God to bless the offering. Father God, I thank you today for your faithfulness, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that in our lives we can just see your hand of provision. And I just pray that you'd bless this offering and your people as they give. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, good morning. Thanks so much for tuning in. We are excited to uh, be together in this forum once again. We had such a great time uh, doing this last time and, and appreciate all your feedback uh, from it. It kind of inspired us to uh, bring to an end this series in James by kind of um, revisiting that style of, of teaching. And so uh, it's been a, quite a journey these last uh, number of weeks. James, ha- I pray, has rocked your world like uh, his words have rock mine, and, and uh, it's really been just an encouragement and um, just a reminder that God's looking for us to live out our faith, right? And, and what we say is really secondary to um, how we live our lives. And so um, today we're going to come to that last portion of Scripture uh, that oftentimes um, brings all kinds of questions and um, sometimes even some confusion. And, and so we're going to end um, our our series by looking at James chapter 5 and verses 19 through 20 together. And um, let's kind of get to the heart of really what James is saying. A lot of times in texts of scripture, we can, we can see the, the, the clear substance of what the writer is addressing. And then the, there's always a tendency of kind of going on some rabbit trails. And we don't want to do that. We want to kind of focus on what, what is James saying here? Um, that's, that's most important for us to grasp. And so I'm just going to read. It's only two quick verses here. Um, James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. He says, My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And there's a lot going on in these two passages, these two verses of Scripture. And so obviously he's addressing brethren, right? He's, he's using that, that shepherding um, um, phrase to, to his audience. He's, he's acknowledging them as my brothers. And he says, if anyone among you, among our brothers, wanders from the truth. Well, what truth? Truth of the gospel, right? The truth of what he just said. So he focuses, so the, the audience to whom James is addressing are brethren, right? He says, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, and, and he says, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. And so the direct audience that he's speaking to here is not so much the person who's wandering from the truth, but the person who is to go after that one who's wandering from the truth. He's addressing these churches that are are running um, because they're of of persecution. And um, he's addressing all throughout the text, this is what a believer looks like. This is how a believer is to respond in different situations. And this is what the new life looks like. And, and, and so he's been kind of laying this out all throughout the text. And now he kind of has been really bringing us on a bit of a course correction, uh, at least those who are wandering, 
on how they live their lives. And now he kind of brings it back over at the end and he says, it's almost like he's passing a baton off to them and saying, after everything I just said, follow my lead and go after those who have wandered. We've, we've, we've all been in the church for a long time. We've worshiped alongside people, fellowshiped alongside people, raised hands in song who have left the faith, you know. Um, I know that was my story, right? Um, just curious, have you ever had someone kind of go after you? Did you ever have a, did you ever have a part in a time in your life where you, as James says, kind of wandered from the truth and, and someone went after you? Yes. <laughs> I, I, I could think of a time um, after high school where, or even after my first initial year of college, which I had done away, coming back to New York and finding that the church I had grown up in was in a very hard situation spiritually, so I lost a lot of that community. And I spent a couple months just basically floundering and making some very, very bad choices that, praise God, haven't had too long of like consequences afterwards in my life. Um, and I can think of two, spe- two people specifically. One is this friend of mine named Josh, who is keeping me honest on the daily. And I was making sure I wasn't doing anything too stupid, or when he did catch me doing things that were too stupid and or illegal, <laughs> he, would hit, he would slap me up a little bit and remove whatever it is I was trying to do or remove me from a situation a couple times. And this other guy, a soldier gentleman named John, who would be the one who's... who's a little more than twice my age, who would take me out to dinner and, or t- would take me out for some sort of like coffee or something and be like, what, do you, what are you doing, man? Like, keep, keep your eyes focused on the long term. Keep your eyes focused on the prize that is Christ. Like, don't let the things that you're going through lead you into sin and make a shipwreck of yourself. And like those kind of things ultimately brought me out of the stupidness that I was doing. Right. Yeah, in that cool. season. Yeah, awesome. I had a, a similar when Dory and I were just dating we, um, she started going back to church she wanted to, and she met this pastor, uh, Nick Vella, and I didn't like the things that he was telling her about our relationship and what was going on in that relationship, and it was very, not good, uh, from my perspective anyway. And uh, I was going to go tell the guy off and just say, who are you to stick your finger in what's going on with me and her? And I was really going to just go to guns on the guy. And he just met me with so much love and so much understanding. And he didn't rail against me. He didn't, and he kind of brought me in and, and started talking to me and was looking forward. To, I'd show up at work at something with the church and moving furniture, whatever. And he's like, oh, hey, Dominic. You know? And he made it. And, and he, I could not. I could not be angry with the guy, you know, and he didn't come across like that. And I, I think that was important because if he had come across like with an attitude of anger or like, you know, oh, well, you're doing the wrong thing and something like that, I don't think I would be here. I don't think I would have. Mm-hmm. And he definitely turned the ship for me. Definitely. Cool. What about people you've gone after? Hmm. What, about, what about, you know, that one that you, you know, have had an opportunity to walk with and then all of a sudden they just kind of, I think that's uh, certainly an interesting t- challenge. Uh, I had an advantage uh, because I worked mainly with teenagers, and um, they would sometimes be so on fire for God, and then, you know, something would happen and they'd walk away. And to go and have that conversation with them, you know what I mean, and to remind them kind of where things were at before and where they're at now, and do it in a way that. Um, because sometimes you got to go into it with no, no real agenda, so to speak. I mean, you know, or no, uh, you know, ex- expectations. You, you go in and you want to restore them, but it's really up to them to make that decision. But I think what you want to do is um, definitely leave the door of reconciliation open. So um, I learned over the years you can't hammer them with the truth because they're, they're already ashamed many times of where they're at and what, what's going on in their lives. They're on the run. Uh, they know what's right and what's wrong. And so you're just the person that's there to remind them and to really be a reflection of who God is. Hmm. And so um, sometimes the outcome um, doesn't go the way you'd like it to go. We'd, we'd like for people to fall on their knees and repent, <laughs> whatever. But um, 
just knowing that God is the one that really works there and to leave that kind of the heart work up to the Holy Spirit. Mm. So you, 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 you deal with the issue, you, you talk with them, you love them through it, let them know you're going to be there when they're ready or whatever. And, and, and uh, sometimes it worked out really well, but other times, you know, I mean, there's still people that I'm praying for that I know God's hand was upon their life and they, they really walked away and stayed away for, for now. So, but the end of the, it's not the end of the story yet. So, yeah. yeah. It's funny. I, I remember just you know being um, that that kid in your youth group <laughs> and being on fire from God and, and walking away from the Lord. And um, I remember uh, you and Lucy and Andy Firmonti um, always. Well, Andy was more like he'd go right for my jugular. Like, that. but it, it, like, That's scary. yeah, we had the relationship. Like, like he just that was just him, you know. Like he would. Yeah, he took me right to the woodshed. He kind of like, you know, what are you doing? I, but I, he, it was so clearly in love that it was so received. And, and with, with Pastor Frank and Lucy, there was just always that, that, that uh, feeling of acceptance, regardless of what I was going through. And like, they really, like, there was such an important, important thing for me that when I finally came around, um, they were the first people I reached out to, the Andy and, 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 and Pastor Frank and Lucy. It was like, it was, so it's just it, how we go after people is really important. And, and so um, maybe just kind of take a couple minutes and, and think about that because I think we all got to, we all know those folks who are, you know, departed um, at least for a season. And, and I, I appreciate you saying that. We need to remember the story's not over, mm-hmm. you know. Um, how do we do it though? Like Pastor Frank said, just I think it's so important for people to know that if they're whether they're a Christian or not, we still love them and care about them. Because uh, very often um, I've seen situations where um, people are in the church, people all gather around them, and um, I, I I experience a, a situation where um, I was heading in a different direction, and it actually wasn't even an ungodly direction, but it didn't uh, adhere to what they believed. Uh, and I just really felt very shunned, you know, and it's, it's like they, they didn't contact me anymore. And it was just, and it was just, it was pretty hurtful. And, um, so I think it's so important that we maintain our love for a person and, and continue to reach out to them. I think that's important too. let them know that we're, we still really care about them because if it's only the fact that we are, that they are part of our club, our Christian yeah. club that, um, that's why we accept them, then that is totally um, not what Christ is all about. Yeah. And we don't want to represent him in that way. Yeah, so the authenticity piece is really, yeah. is really important. Yeah, absolutely. I like what Paul writes in Galatians. He says, brethren, if, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. And what a, what a great instruction for us on um, on not only how we are to go after people, but also how we are to protect ourselves from, um, f- you know, um, of, of being tempted as well. What, what, do you, what do you think about that passage of scripture? What kind of comes to your mind? Is that, um, what, what does a spirit of gentleness look like? Well, the opposite of um, being coming across harsh or domineering or, you know, um, you know, in a way that would seem to drive a person away. Um, <laughs> there's an old hymn um, from 1888. Um, it says, it's called, Throw Out the Lifeline. And it's talking about, you know, throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline, someone is drifting away, someone, uh, throw out the lifeline, throw out the lifeline, someone needs saving today. You know, and it, 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 it talked about, and it was written by a man who experienced a shipwreck. And uh, he said, you know, that's what people are. They're floundering, like you've often said. They're not, when you're in that spot, you're not comfortable with the sinners and you're not comfortable with the saints. You're like a man without a country, yeah. you know? And you can't be happy with the, the Christians because you know what you're doing when you're not with them is wrong. And then when you're with the, with the sinners, you know that what you're doing is wrong and you can't find a spot. And you need to throw a lifeline to a person like that and give them a chance to, to almost like to uh, get back in with honor you know, and not, uh, and, you know, and not display their sins to them or rub their nose in it, 
you know, and then if they fall again, and this happens a lot with people who are, you know, in drugs and things like that, is they'll fall in and fall out, fall in, fall out. And you can you always have to be a, a Barnabas. You have to be an encourager. Mm -hmm. You always have to be there for them to encourage them. When they're down, when they're you know, really struggling, you got to stay with them. You know, I've experienced it once with this one guy, and it was just like, it was wonderful to see him turn his life around. Right. You know, and I, I, I could die now and feel comfortable with that. Yeah. He's on the right path now. Yeah, and you, you bring out a great point because when a person is wandering from the truth and they're doing their own thing, they know it. They don't need, I, I, nobody had to tell me I was a sinner. I knew, they didn't even know what I was aware of. You know what I mean? And so I didn't need anybody letting me know where I strayed because I knew more than they did about where I, you know, it was what the most effective impacting conversations were the ones, like you said, that they, just, they loved me, they accepted me, they, they didn't, you know, they didn't condone what I was doing, but they affirmed me for me. And that's a real important thing for us to, to, to do, for sure. I, I almost see this passage as kind of like a search and rescue operation, you know? That when a person gets lost in the wilderness, the call goes out that they're lost. And so they have a, a search and rescue team that's trained to do that. But this is for all of us, all believers are to do this, not just. So you, you have to go and find the person because they've lost their way. So we have to search them out, you know, and then uh, you have to redirect them and, and show them how to get back home and, and bring them back safely and, 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 and the rescue in doing that. And so it's, it's really important because like the passage says, they, they wandered from the truth. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, the Holy Spirit is there and that conviction and that, you know, uh, disappointment is already there. And so if you come with the wrong attitude, you're, that just gives the enemy another opportunity to say, see, yeah. you know, they don't really care about you. Uh, you know, they're just trying to push their agenda or whatever. And, and, you know, and that's not the case. When you go to restore somebody with gentleness, it's really, I mean, you think about, you know, the, the way a mother has, treats a child, you know what I mean? And uh, an infant when they're first born, I mean, it's just got to be a total, it's got to be gentleness there. And, and uh, so it, it's, a, it's having an attitude of, you know, you know that grace and mercy has to operate there, yeah. you know, and not, not uh, punishment and, and, and uh, you don't, you're not there to discipline them, you're there to redirect them, so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we're reminded that it's, it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. Right. So we have to exude that kind of character to those around us. That's, that's what draws people back very often to, again, to see that they are loved, even when they are in that place. Of, of sin. Uh, there was somebody I was um, speaking with recently who I wasn't sure, but I noticed something that was going on in his life that was, that could have looked like he was heading in the wrong direction. And when I talked to him about it, you know, I was very nice about it. And um, it turns out that it really, he was really doing okay. And what I saw was not exactly what wasn't playing into his life the way I thought it may have been. But he was so thankful that I actually asked him about it. So I think it, it's something we need We need to be a little bit more bold yeah. whenever we see something and not be afraid um, to speak to somebody about what, what, we, what we see going on. And again, making sure that the log is not in our own eye and um, that we can um, come alongside them and just encourage them and, um, and just to show them the fact that, that if there is something going on, we want to be right there for them. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I think along the lines of what Pastor Frank is saying, there's, there's almost like this lost art of searching for someone. Like we're almost expecting people to pop in and then talk to them then, or try and get them to come onto our terms. But to go after the person that is the one means we have to figure out where they are. And I think it would, it's most wise a lot of the times to try and meet with them on their terms in what they would say is like their arena or their space to show that, no, this isn't about you coming back into the institution of the church. This is saying there's someone from the body that's missing that, that needs to be around, that we want you around. And, we'll go where you are and, and meet you where you are, just, just as Jesus did when sitting with sinners and, and prostitutes. And granted, the Pharisees accused him of being a drunkard and a glutton, but sometimes it takes that, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> in yeah. order to reach someone, since if they're wandering, they're going to be in unsavory places that we wouldn't normally want to find ourselves. So I think there is something um, important um, also, I guess, strangely beautiful about trying to, to go after a person and just figure out where you can find them and, 
and, and meet them where they are and, and engage them exactly in that spot. That's a great point, because that's the picture we have of Jesus, right? The shepherd who leaves the 99 and goes after the one. Right. And, and so that's, that's a, um, and, and I really appreciate what you just said too. Sometimes we, get think, we, we, we assume that what we need to do for them is to bring them back into the church. Um, and that's not, that's not what the problem is, right? We need to bring it back to Jesus. And when a person comes back to Jesus, they'll come back to church. But, but um, I, I think that that's a really important um, part of, of um, what ought to motivate us um, is not to fill a seat, but to go after a, an erring brother or, or sister. I had a quick story. I had a young man, he had just passed through youth group, very talented musically, wanted to be a musician, and that's what, that's what his life goal was. So he, he played and wrote songs in the church and everything, and he kind of drifted and went into the world and started playing in clubs. So one night I decided I was going to go and just see him. And I, so I walked in, he was playing, and I sat down, and he looked up and he saw me. I, <laughs> I never forget the look on his face. It, so he's like, he finished that song. He goes, I'm going to take an intermission now. And he came over and goes, what are, you, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I said, I came to see you. You know, I, I miss you. I don't see you anymore. You know what I mean? And so I, I met him on his old turf kind of, <laughs> and he kind of set him back. You know what I mean? And know what to do with it. And I just, I, you know, I didn't preach a sermon to him. You know what I mean? Just let him know that, you know what? You're here. I know where you were at. I know where God's hand is on your life. And, you know. Just want to see that happen again. So, and yet you did preach a sermon to him, which is well, so cool, yeah, right? Without, the best, words, the best yeah. kind. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that's really. I bet that person probably never forgot that, you know. And that, that's yeah. that's that's cool. What what about the person who's who's watching this right now, and they're like, "That's me. I'm I'm not where I used to be. Um, there was a time where I felt closer to God, and I just feel, especially." maybe in the midst of all the social distancing and the lack of being able to, you know, I just feel so disconnected. Um, how, how, you know, I don't want to be that guy or that girl who wanders from the truth. What do I do? Um, what would you say to that person? Well, you, you taught on this a, a while back about doing the first things, doing what you did when you first came to the Lord. You know, whatever worked that brought you to where you were, is what you should redo again. Mm. It's like basic training. You were talking about how baseball players go back to basic training. No matter how good they are, every year they come back, they learn how to run a base, hold bat, right. you know, chase down a ball, you know, stuff like that. They learn these things because we forget. And so a person needs to be reminded of that and then brought back slowly to a point where they feel confident in that. And, but it's a process. It's not something that's gonna happen overnight. Yeah. You know, I know in my case, I wandered around for a while um, before I found my, you know, recommitted myself and got myself back on track. Um, and it was really just, you know, a, a time thing. But yeah, if, you know, you just have to, it's a slow process. It's not something you're going to come back quick, you know. And then sometimes if they come back quick, you're like, you're not even sure if they really mean it, you know, mm -hmm. but as opposed to the time. I would first say to that person, um, you, you can't outrun grace. You just, you just can't. Like, it's, it's physically impossible to outrun the grace of God. It's, it's always extended. So for the person who wanders, if, if they're in that place of humility where they're saying, oh, I've really messed up. Like I feel the, the gravitas of my sin and its implications in my life and another, that, that you're exactly where you need to be. And in, the, in that heart space and in that head space, God will extend grace because he provides grace to the humble. He's the lifter of the lowly. You know, a, bro a broken reed he won't despise. And, and all those promises of scripture, if we, if we remember those and, and we feel in faithfulness their truthfulness, they'll, they'll be enacted in our lives. And that, that's the importance of, of our faith in relation to, to the grace that's extended. Um, so I, I would, if someone came to me and said that, I would remind them of that. And I would suggest two things. I'd be like, hey, go spend a long afternoon with God. Go, go take a stroll on the shore and spend some time reading and praying and just remembering that God is your father and, and who he is. And then I would say, let's, let's spend some time together and, and just figure out where you got to go from here because there's, there's no such thing as, as a one-size-fits-all re return to righteousness, I guess, speaking or, or orthopraxically. Um, and I would, I would tell them, like, hey, we're going we're gonna to get two or three brothers around you or, or sisters, depending on who it is, and they're going to walk alongside you for a little while and the training wheels will come off one day and you're going to think six months, a year, however long from now, like, 
wow, I'm no longer in, in that spot. But as, as was suggested, it takes a lot of time, but that doesn't mean that grace is any more or less effective. I think about um, reminding them of how wide God's arms are open to them when they're ready to come back as he's you know, opened and spread his arms out on the cross. Those arms are still open as a welcoming embrace to come back mm -hmm. So they know that, you know, there's acceptance and there's not, you know, because uh, I think shame sometimes certainly keeps people away, you know. And I, I think that there's probably been instances where we've, you know, elevated the truth to a place where people don't feel like they can come back. Right. You yeah. know, and we got to make sure that we remind them that God's arms are open wide. Mm -hmm. He's uh, welcoming them back and wants to embrace them. Yeah, there's no condemnation in Christ. Uh, and once we say yes to God, he is going to um, keep extending that grace to us, as you were saying. And um, just to remember that the enemy is certainly going to constantly be speaking into into their hearts, trying to tell them, nah, you know what, you really screwed up. You're not good. And I'm I've heard people so many times, and it can be used even as an excuse to come back, not to come back Uh and just what we need to remind them is that, hey, forgiveness, that forgiveness that happened when Jesus was on that cross is always extended to you. And uh, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter how far you've backslidden, God's grace will always be able to propel you back to where you, you belong and, um, and never to listen to the enemy who's constantly going to try to. Uh, slip a different message into them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I was thinking, like, if you're able to hear this, it's not too late. Yes. And that's... Yeah, I mean, that's, that's such good news, you know, and I just think, I think of the, you know, one of my favorite parables of the, the, the prodigal son, you know, who, who goes and, and, and leaves his father's home and he's out partying and spending all the money and, he, you know, and he loses it all, right? And, 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 and he has no more friends, no more money, and he's, he's feeding the pigs. And then he's like, you know, wait, wait a minute, what am I doing here? My father's rich. This is how I'll get back to God or get back to my father, right? I will tell my father, I'll come back and I'll work as a slave for you, like your other servants. And so he heads home and, get, and, begins, and his father, I love this, says, and what, when he was a great way off, his father saw him and went running to him. And before the kid was able to get out, his plan of what he thought he had to do to get back in the good graces with his father his father said, cuts him off. He like put a robe on, you know, put a robe on him, put a ring on his fingers, sandal on his feet, go kill the fatted calf. My son is home. And I think so many times we, we think we need to do all these things to get back to God. And God just says, just come. Just, just, just love on me and, and, and we'll, we'll get through this together. And, and I, I just, so for that one that might be listening today and, and just finds themselves being like that one who maybe is a, is, is a, has wandered off, it's not too late. Today is the day of salvation. And so um, I pray that these, these words um, this morning were encouraging to you. Um, for those who have it wandered, I pray that it creates a pathway back to God for those of us that, that, um, that, that are looking to see how do we employ what James is saying. Let's go after people with a, in a spirit of gentleness, right? With tenacity and love and, and, and rep, knowing that we represent the, the, the arms and the heart of God in going after lost people. What a, what a, great, what a great privilege we, we have to be able to be a part of, of someone's story. To, as, they, as they come back to God. And, and so that's a, that's a beautiful thing. And so James lays it out for us, man. He, he, he really lays out the way in which our lives ought to uh, be lived out. And I pray that we do that to the glory of God and make God proud, you know, so. So thanks for tuning in. We're, we're so glad we were able to go through this series together with you. I uh, pray that, uh, if, hey, if you missed any, they're all up there online and uh, integritydli.org. And uh, let's, just, let's just have a word of prayer. Um, Father, um, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for how it sharpens us, it corrects us, and it directs us. Um, and Lord, um, at different times and seasons of our lives, we, we need each of those results from your word. And so we lead upon your Holy Spirit to do uh, in us what we need. Um, we thank you, Father, for this time. Thanks for these brothers that I have an opportunity to um, learn from and serve alongside. 
And I pray your blessing on each one that be listening here today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. Hey parents, make sure your kids check back in at 11.15 for a digital Kids Zone service. Don't have them miss it. Hey Integrity, I am excited to announce to you that beginning Sunday, August 2nd, we're going to be having our worship services at 7.30 in the evening in the church parking lot under the stars. And then following our worship service, we're going to be having a family movie time, some ice cream and snacks and gather together. Great time just to reconnect with one another. Certainly we're going to observe some social distancing and follow the necessary guidelines, but we're going to be worshiping together and we're going to be having some family time together and really looking forward to reconnecting with you. Be sure to look out for your emails as we are putting more information and the details out to you. God bless you, look forward to seeing you then. Good morning everyone, and welcome to Integrity Church Online this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so happy that you are here and we hope that you feel welcomed. We hope that you join us tonight at 7.30 for worship at the church parking lot. And as always online, we still have our special spot for prayer requests, should you have any individual prayer needs. And we hope that you are continuing to fill out the Connect card online. Um, so if it's your first or second visit, or if you've been coming lots and lots of times, we hope that um, you're utilizing that if you'd like to get involved in the church or connect in any way. We hope to see you tonight at worship and also at our open air Sunday services. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks, Connie. It is our sincere desire to see you continue to grow in your faith, both in the good times and the bad. And James has certainly made a solid case that character is truly forged through crisis if we allow God to mold us and shape us as we experience any and every kind of trial. And I hope that you've been inspired, especially by this week's study, to seek out those who have wandered from the faith. For the rewards are both so great for the restored and the restorer. Let's go after them together. May God bless you abundantly today as you reflect on His goodness in your life. Have a great and wonderful day.